Hello and welcome back anybody, everybody, but probably nobody. This is Thor W here to bring you another episode of Super Mario World. When we last stopped off, we just opened up the Valley of Bowser, which is literally an underground, underwater, evil villain, evil James Bond villain lair under a sunken ghost ship. Wow, that's pretty freaking cool. Alright, so Valley of Bowser 1, let's go. And, uh, these are going to be some of the harder levels that we've seen so far. Ha, huh? get trapped, Mega Mole. Mega Moles make a reappearance here in the Valley of Bowser. They're going to show up, uh, relatively often throughout throughout the area. Which, which is fine, because I, li I like the Mega Moles. They're pretty cool. They got sunglasses on and everything. <laughs> Somehow that worked for me. I don't know how. Up. Oh. We can, we can even sit on the Mega Mole's head and travel with them if we want to. These, oh, huh. they aren't what I thought they were. However, uh, somehow I made that block spin. I guess my cape hit it, or something like that. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. See. Let's fly on up here, because I can, and there's a moon up there, in case you guys didn't know. You can also uh, take that top road and travel across the Mega Mole's head in order to get to that moon. It's, uh, it's a pretty well-kept secret. Don't tell anyone about that moon. If you tell anyone about our secret moon, I, I don't know if we can date anymore, guys. I'm sorry. But our love will be... our love will be over. And then I'll have to sing, like, a, 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 a sappy love song. A sappy sad love song. You know, something like uh, Taylor Swift or something like that. And then I'll have to sell uh, a, a million albums to a bunch of teenagers about it. You wouldn't want that now, would you? Of course you wouldn't. And we're done with the Valley of Bowser 1. Very simple. Uh, it's a it's a yellow stage, so don't worry about any secret stage crappy guru. There's a there's a couple more dragon coins in this stage. Obviously, I only got the three. Um, they're not too terribly hard to find. If you just walk through the level, you'll find them. Ba Valley of Bowser 2, however, is a red stage, uh, and there happens to be a fortress above it and a ghost house to the left of it. So I wonder where the exits are going to exit towards. Click. Wah! You can't touch this. You can't even see me. I'm like John Cena. Bam, 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 bam. In a case it's hard for you guys to tell, I'm recording this right after recording the uh, Chocolate Island stuff because uh, I just felt like I was playing so dang well. How could I possibly not continue? <laughs> I only died like eight times on Chocolate Island 2. Clearly I am playing it the best of my ability right now. <laughs> Clearly. Okay, so there, there's part one of there. Those are just a bunch of uh, moving platforms with swoopers. Oh, I forgot to show off these wings. I still haven't shown off those wings. You, you need a, a Yoshi for those, though. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. I keep forgetting to show those off. Alright, so this is an auto-moving platformer section where you have to move at the right time. See, if I had gone to the right there, I would have just been squished because there was no little alcove to hide under like like in here. So, I, I kind of like that mechanic, it, or the idea behind that mechanic, but one of the issues with it is the fact that it takes a while to get through the area, if you're being careful especially. You can actually probably make that run if you're quick about it, while the, uh, while the Gold is moving upwards. Keep going. But yeah, this particular part takes a little while to get through. So, you know. Ooh, that was almost really close. Look at that. Look at it. It's yellow. And a wall. More concealing, I guess. 
And uh, as always, if you get squished, it is instant death. There is no coming back from being squishy squished. Mm, could I have made that run? I might have been able to make that run if I just kept going. Well, now I feel silly. I think I could have made that. I think I should have chanced it. That way we get to sit through the whole thing again if I mess up. <laughs> that's, that's particularly why I'm not taking the chance on this particular section. Because you saw that took a long time. That took a very long time. Look at that. Oh, I'm just crushing everything with my Superman abilities. Perfect. Uh, so yeah, that that section takes a really, really, really long time if you're not careful with it. So, that's our normal stage exit. It's going to take us to the ghost house. However, we need to clear the special exit as well. We need to go find that key and shove it in the hole that it deserves to be shoved in. Now, uh, I'm going to just tell you right now, anytime there's Yoshi wings, it will only take you to what equates to a normal exit. The Yoshi wings will never, ever, ever... What the heck happened? How did that... He didn't even get into it, and yet it was hopping around like he was inside of it. What the heck? Anyway, the Yoshi wings will never take you to a secret exit. They will only equate as a normal exit. The Yoshi wings do take you to the end of the stage. So if I had Yoshi, we could have avoided all that uh, yellow moving block nonsense that takes forever. But I wanted to at least show it. Get out of here, Koopa. No one likes you. So yeah, um, I, I just had to show show it off to so that you guys could see it, know how to get through it and whatnot, because I like to sh I like to help you guys out. Anyway, our secret is right back here, I think. Oh, is it actually in the next section? Oh no, it's actually through all this crap. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh uh, no, I forgot. I, I remembered wrong. Alright guys, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to use the magic of editing, or the magic of fast-forwarding through my game, with uh, save states, to make sure I don't screw up. And, uh, I'm going to make sure that <laughs> this doesn't take too long for, uh, for us. Not, not just you guys, because, ooh, this is boring to sit through. Not once, but twice. But, uh, I, I, I mean, I guess I can uh, keep this in and show you guys how much faster it is if you just fast-forward your way through it and cheat. It's, uh, it's a lot faster overall. A whole lot faster. See how much faster that is? Beautiful. Run, Mario, run! Run, Mario, run! Yeah, I can easily make that. I should have done that the first time. It's good to know. Alright, so that that took far less time, in real-world time at least, to do. So yeah, it's actually back here. You hop over there, you have to be able to fly, and then there's our key. This is actually the most well-hidden secret in the game. So uh, good job on the good job on the guy that hit this. You're you're you, there's a special place reserved in hell for you because. I could never find that as a kid. <laughs> when I was a kid playing through this game, I could never find that. So let's go to the the, uh, the Valley of Bowser Fortress. You can see these big spiky bits make a return, much like they were in the uh, the sixth castle, Wendy Okupa's castle. And so do the falling blocks there. And the the bony Koopas. Okay, these are really fast once they go all the way up, so you gotta be really quick with your hops, because this is a double jump right over here. Ready? And... Oh, right, it's a triple, actually. You gotta move a little bit quick. Uh, it's easiest to do spin jumps there, because spin jumps are smaller than normal jumps in most cases and take a shorter amount of time to go through. And this is very much the same principle. 
You have to be kidding me, that fireball. Alright, I'll leave it behind. Ugh. Alright, let's go kill Reznor. Again. Hi, Reznor. Oh, jeez, don't do that. Don't just suddenly open your mouth and spit hot fire at me. Man, Reznor, you must be spitting your mixtape at me, because that's some... that's some fire. That's some fire. Okay, so yeah, Reznor's actually got a lot of trouble hitting you if you're on his little spinny wheel. Right, so that hit I took was really unfortunate that the fireball happened to be there at the time. <laughs> but, whatever. It's fine. No problem. It happens. Okay, right, Valley Fortress done, and that opens us to Bowser's back door. Now, we, we don't want to surprise Bowser by sneaking in through his back door when he's not looking. So, we're going we're gonna to storm the front gates. Don't you worry about it. Okay, the green bubbles have made a return for the, uh, the Valley of Bowser Ghost House, and in 99% of cases, you can spin jump them. But in this particular case, uh, the game said no because it hates me sometimes. Because I just had to s open my mouth and be like, yeah, you can spin jump that. Alright, so the way to get through this is to actually activate that P-block and get through all that. And into here. Bam. Done. As long as you get towards one of the last two doors on that far right side, it's over. But I'll show a little bit more of the ghost house off for you guys, and I'll probably kill kill myself to get out of it. But uh, maybe I'll get a power-up or two and might want to keep it. Because I'm sure you guys want to see a little bit more of the ghost house than that. That's, that's a very short, small representation of how actually big this ghost house is. It's got a lot going for it. got a whole lot going... Like I said, 99% of the time you can spin jump those, but this is the 1%. Ooh, a star. Stars are a way to kill the booze. The booze will never handle me at my starriest. Okay, so if we go in there, it actually seems like we're making progress. Look at that coin snake I made. So many coins. And if we go through that door, it takes us right back to the beginning. Now what happens if we go to the right and we go through some <laughs> different doors? Well, they take you right back to the beginning again. So, there we go. There's the Valley Ghost House and the basic intricacies of it. If you just run to the right as fast as you can, you beat the level. It's it's really not that, that hard. Oh! Uh, well, it's time for these nightmare blocks. Timed blocks. They will last for as many seconds as the number on their uh, block says. And yeah, I screwed up. They last for as many seconds as the number on their block says, and I'm trying to do things a little bit more complicated than I need to here in the Valley of Bowser 3. So, in uh, Super Mario World, they're actually pretty easy to deal with overall. I just kind of, I just kind of messed up. And look, look how it introduces them to you. You cannot die by falling off a platform or anything there. It just gives you a nice, easy, simple introduction. It even gives you a double so that you ha get a feel for it. So that you get a feel for it. And in fact, I'm going to show it to you again so that you guys really get this down. Um, <laughs> whereas for anyone that's seen my Kaizo Mario video knows that these are part of the bane of my existence through, through one of their levels. Also, the world is made of of uh, daikon radishes, because why not? Ah! Uh, I keep killing myself. I'm do I'm being real dumb. <laughs> like my hands are not doing what my brain wants them to do. Y you guys ever get that where you're like, no, I told you to do this, and then your hands are like, but I did this, and that's what matters is what I did, not what you told me to do. Because that's how I feel right now. And I can't I can't cheat the platforming with a cape or anything like that. We 
Got him. <laughs> Got him. That's all that I wanted. I just needed to hit him. Oh, for anyone having, like, trouble moving around with springs in Super Mario games, just if you just crouch, and I, I'm sure I've said this before, but if you crouch when you let go of them, they just drop right in front of you. It's very simple. You know, Mario, I wasn't even holding a direction there. All I did was jump on the freaking, the freaking Daikon Radish, and you just, you're the one that decided to jump off the face of the Earth. Or the face of the Mushroom Kingdom, I should say. Like, what the heck, man? Do you have just a death wish? I think Mario just, just want, has a death wish. He just wants to die sometimes. Alright, so let's go back to our, uh, our jumpy blocks, our timed blocks, our timed platforms here. Oh, did I mention that your dragon coin count disappears if you have to use a checkpoint? Bonsai Bill! You again! But yeah, if you guys are going for all the dragon coins and whatnot, you will have to complete the level legit. One, one run through, no checkpoints. What do you think this is, a charity? No checkpoints! No checkpoints for you! This seems to be like... Just one stage in the past couple worlds that just wants to annoy me. Valley of Bowser 4. It's a red stage, so obviously that means there's only two exits. I mean one. I mean two. There's two. Obviously. And if you guys didn't know that, then uh, you have not been paying attention and you will fail the test because that is on the test. Okay, I wanted to murder him because he, he's really annoying and everything, but whatever. So that's how they introduce the concept of these rock-throwing football players. However, once they, uh... Once they get hit, just like any of the other sports ball players, they turn into regular... regular charging chucks. Okay... I came in here because I want Ziffetha. And this, as you can tell, takes you backwards because it goes from right to left. Very, very uncouth for a Mario. For a, a Mario game pipe. Everything else goes left to right, you know, that's how Mario works. But, that goes right to left specifically because, yeah. Okay, if I recall correctly, I believe you need to keep Yoshi for this, so I'm going to be very careful with my Yoshi here. Okay, yeah. Yep, there's a platform right there, and then lava. I remember this level. I remember the, 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 the tricky, tricksy, trickies. The tricksy tricks. Gotta be very careful with these, these guys and not lose Yoshi on this one. Because I'm going to tell you guys right now, you need Yoshi. That's why the, the level gives you a Yoshi. It's not because, yo, here's Yoshi. You want Yoshi, right? Yoshi's a cool guy. <gasps> no, right at the end! And this is why you need Yoshi. See that? You have, to, you have to use Yoshi's tongue to get that key. But that's fine. That's fine. We have to beat the level twice anyway. I had a feeling I was going to do that towards the end. Towards the end is where they start sticking the charging chucks in some really, really annoying places just to... Just to get... just to get you going. Alright, so... We're just gonna briskly pace our way through the level. Take a nice brisk pacing. A nice quick little walk. Get ourselves our Yoshi. Careful not to fall into the lava. Or just just refuse to jump, Mario. Don't don't worry about it. You don't need to jump. You dive right into that hot lava bath. Like, what is wrong with Mario today? He is He is really suicidal today. 
Like, he is doing everything in his power to die. That was my fault. That one was my fault. Fair enough. Fair enough. But, but like, ooh. Mario's really starting to wear on my nerves today, guys. For some reason, he just does not want to want to complete the levels or anything like that. All right, so I'm probably going to run through that ice path to get the, the feather again. In fact, I know I am. Yeah, don't don't just jump in there into the cheap cheats there. The cheapity cheapities. All right. Okay. Now if we take this nice and carefully, then nothing can defeat us if we're careful, right? Perfect. Amazing. Give me the Yoshi. This time, this time, when we drop onto that platform, if you don't freaking... I, I swear to God, Yoshi, if you don't jump and you just plummet me right into the lava... What is that? Like, what What was that, Yoshi? Was that revenge for, for your fallen brethren who I've jumped off of to save my own skin? I guess fair enough. He's like, nah, you can't jump away this time. I've got you where I want you. I want you, Mario! And you're gonna take it. You're gonna take it all the way down to Lava Town. Gotta be careful. Gotta be real careful. Okay. Alright, good. Good, 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 good. First try. First try! We did it first try, guys. Ignore the other, the other ones. First try. Alright, so that opens us to Star Road, which if we take a look, that is the last star for Star Road. The fifth and final star. And now we have the front door, which we can go in, but no, we have to complete Larry's Castle, number seven. The final Koopa Kid. Koopaling. Whatever you want to call it. And it starts off with everyone's favorite mechanic, the Block Snake. I honestly do like the mechanic of the block snake, or the, the idea behind it. The implementation of it is a little annoying if you, like, start losing the level, because... Because you can't really pace yourself... Uh, yeah. For some reason, I, I just blanked on the fact that I, that I should just jump on top of that. I don't know why. I, I'm just... I, I don't know. I don't know why I can't play today. I'm having a really off day with, with Mario today, guys. Clearly, I should also record some Kaizo Mario with this level of skill, because... Oh boy, that'd be fun. <laughs> okay, once it starts going up, jump on top of it, and it'll just carry you where you need to go. Then you don't even gotta worry. You can run up here for this part. Ah, oh, I missed. Wanted that extra mushroom. Don't worry, it'll come back. And it'll carry me to victory. Yeah, this particular block snake, it's good to stay up close to the front of it. Because you have to kind of be on the front of it in a few occasions. Now it's going to wind itself around, give this uh, ball and chain a chance to hit you. Give another ball and chain down here a chance to hit you, I think. Yep. So that's one of the problems with block snakes. Now this one, we're just going to stand on, because it's going to take us on a journey. Journey down here to the halfway mark, the last two dragon coins, and a mushroom. Really? Huh, I thought I was going to butt slide right into it. Magikoopas! Alright, we, we do need a Magikoopa because I don't have a cape. So we're going to have to wait for one to spawn. Magikoopas will spawn indefinitely in this place. And shoot place, PlayStation symbols at you. Whoa! Ah! Oh, <laughs> don't panic. 
Don't panic. Panic is the enemy. So, so is that mushroom. That mushroom can kiss my grits for falling into the lava the way it did. Alright, Magic Koopa. Come on, Magic Koopa. Shoot your PlayStation symbols at me. Oh, come on. I haven't even taken that long. Right. That was wonderful. It decided to go that direction instead of the other direction. Mmm. 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 Beautiful. <gasps> okay. That's one of the problems with playing a ROM, is the fact that your time limit is actually much lower than what the numbers say. I can't fit. Oh, come on, you did not just thread the needle there. There we go. But yeah, even if the time limit says you have 270 seconds or whatever, it's going to be much shorter time than that. Yeah, yeah, not this time. Got him. I got him. Dead Magikoopas, that's what we needed. Alright, so if the Magikoopas spawn here, they're going to start destroying blocks. And try to make you fall down. That's, that's the basic uh, thing behind this particular castle, is Magikoopas are jerks. Alright, and it's time for our old pal. Remember the first boss of the game? Here is a, uh, ba basically the same thing, but with three fireballs on the, the corners in the center. It doesn't really make it that much harder. The center fireball's a little annoying, but that's it. Uh, so Larry is defeated. Larry and Iggy are the same boss, basically. So there we go. And it's time to destroy the final Koopa Castle. <laughs> Mario has defeated Larry Koopa in castle number 7 by picking his castle up and literally kicking it away. All that is left is Bowser's castle where Princess Toadstool is being held. Can Mario rescue her and restore peace to Dinosaur Land? Well, I'm gonna give it my darndest. Let's enter through Bowser's front door. Alright, so... Bowser's castle is pretty fun. It has, right in the beginning, four different door choices. Each one takes you to a different room with different stuff going on. So let's go ahead. I'm going to choose door number three. So in this particular one, you can't see what's behind these curtains. And apparently you cannot spin these guys. Right. I'm dumb. Cannot spin the Mecha Koopas. So you can't... So, the only ones that you can actually tell what's behind them are the ones with holes. And some curtains will have holes in them, some curtains will not. Usually the curtains with no holes in them have solid ground behind them. Oh, sprite limitate shuns. Right, so that's door number three. Let's go ahead and show the other doors. That's why I died. Or at least another door. Let's go with door number one. Door number one is probably the easiest door to go through. It is, uh... It's a screen scroller with fireballs and these plungers going down. And if you've gotten your... If you've been getting your, uh... Your Switch Palaces, it's extremely easy to just walk through. It's also slow. I want door number six on this one. Door number six is a water area. Water area. Can I hit him? I cannot. Very, uh, very informative. I kind of wish I had uh, my cape right now, but I, I was being dumb and thought I could hit the, the Magic Koopa, so... Or the Mecha Koopa, so let's go with door number two this time. Bam. Door number two is probably the one you can go through the fastest in the first set. And it's very, very easy to just... Bam. Look at that. That is so short. That is so easy. Um, I want door number eight. I want door number eight this time. Because I can. Door number eight. Charging shot. Oh, I fucking forgot. Oh, <laughs> I'm dying so much. I'm so bad. So bad. 
Let's go get door number uh, four. I think door number four is the only one I haven't shown off on the uh, the, the early parts. Alright, oh, um, this is perfectly fine other than the, the... I guess the moving background's not too bad either, because it, it goes back and forth rather than just one direction very quickly. Very easy to go through, just a bunch of sparkies and moving stuff. Let's hit door number five, why not? We're, we're here. Oh, yeah, door number five's also very fast. Run! Bam. Easy peasy. Super easy. And if you take Bowser's back door, this is the room that you're going to start in, right here, with this, uh, this disco ball light. Normally... Oh, come on! Come on, you little demon piece of crap! Really? Really. Really. Just really. Really is all I can say about this. I go door number four. No, door number two. Door number two is the fastest. Because you can jump all that distance right away. And you can keep jumping if you want to. Very quick. Very fast. Then we're going to hit door number five again. I think I didn't show door number six, but whatever. Run! Okay, just running doesn't work. I wanted, I wanted to know. I wanted to know if I could do that. I didn't think I could, but, but you know. Alright, by now I'm sure it's starting to get boring to watch these early parts. I'm going to show off door number six, and then we're going... Oh, no, I did show door number six. It's door number seven I haven't been through. Which I should know, because door number seven is the one I usually take. Anyway, I'll show off what's inside door number seven, and then if I am dumb enough to die again, which, uh, fingers crossed, I am, then I will go ahead and, uh, just go through Bowser's back door. And show you guys what that's like. So this has the, uh, a bunch of Bowser statues. Some shooting fire, some golden and jumping around. The golden ones you cannot spin jump on, if I recall correctly, and they will just murder you. And if, as always, you can spin jump the Bowser fire if you want to. Oh god, the slowdown. So yeah, this uh, this disco ball light up in the top actually takes up a lot of the sprite limitation for the searchlight that we've got going. Alright, to the boss door. And it is time to finally see what this boss fight looks like. Uh, for anyone that watched my Kaizo Mario playthrough, you'll know that uh, the Kaizo Mario version of this, he is invisible, and you cannot see Bowser at all. So his first phase, very simple. He's going to swoop back and forth uh, a few times, and then he's going to spit out some Mecha Koopas, which you have to jump on normally, click up, and smack him in the face. And he will continue this pattern until he gets hit twice. Bam! Perfect timing. And we even have an extra me Mecha Koopa with us. Which if you keep if you keep hitting like this, he cannot hurt you. He will not get back up. These fires you can spin jump. Just gonna show that off. And Princess Toadstool! She'll cry for help and give us a, a mushroom. We're gonna get a quick hit on Bowser because I can. Because I have an extra Mecha Koopa. And now he's going to kind of follow you around with this clown car. And then he's gonna drop one of these black balls, which you can spin jump on, so... You know, no biggie. He's gonna drop a second one, and his next his next thing when he turns... When he stops, he's gonna throw out two Me Mecha Koopas at us. Dude, look at, ba look at how intimidating Bowser looks in this game, though. Look at the spikes on his back, and, and his demon horns and everything. Bowser is freaking scary in this particular game. The clown car is not really scary, and that's to kind of light lighten Bowser up a little bit, because holy crap, he is terrifying. <laughs> like, as a kid, I was scared to death of Bowser in this particular game. Okay, time for Bowser's final phase. He the clown car will get all angry and start stomping around, and it can crush Mecha Koopas, as you can see. 
And he's gonna toss two out. And, you know, the rule of threes, three stages. Uh, I missed. And, click. Bam. It is time. And Bowser just kind of disappears. He's just kind of like, oh, my head hurts. And we get a kiss from the princess. Mario's adventure is over. Mario. Comma, no space. The princess, comma, no space. Yoshi, comma. And his friends are going to take a vacation. Yay! And then... Fireworks! These fireworks look really good, by the way. And as you as you know, in Super Mario Bros, you get fireworks for accomplishing something great. We have rescued the princess and defeated the evil King Koopa. And now it's time for credits to roll. This is my favorite credit sequence of every Super Mario games. I love the I love the song, I love Super Mario World, and I love this game. Takashi Tezuka, good job on your main directing. Hideki Kono, but Hideki is spelled wrong. That's not how you spell Hideki. <laughs> okay. Um, so, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this playthrough of, of the main story. We're still not done. I mean, we've still got the uh, the Star Road to finish, but that'll be another video. And uh, I, want the, I want the credits to properly roll, because... I love the credits, and the credits are going to do the one thing that I really, really like that games don't really do nowadays, and they're going to do a uh, uh, an enemy roll call towards the end of it. And uh, I really do like the enemy roll call where it shows off all the enemies and uh, gives the names of all of them and everything like that. And I, I wish that games did that more often, especially Nintendo games. Nintendo games have such creative-looking enemies and fun stuff going on, and... Uh, like, Mario has a lot, a lot of recycled enemies by now. There's not very many new enemies. It's usually, you know, your Goomba, your Koopa, your Bullet Bill, etc., etc. But now and again, they throw in some new stuff. And the new stuff's always cool. It's always fun. And I, I want to know what they are. So, I'm going to implore Nintendo and uh, anyone else out there with my extremely high viewer count to make sure that they, they do enemy roll calls more often. So we, we've journeyed back to Dinosaur Land, we've saved the Yoshi eggs from the various Koopa castles, we brought Yoshi back, and we saved the princess. All the Yoshi eggs are gonna hatch, and we get a big thank you! And now it's time for the enemy roll call. Starring Parabomb, Paragoomba, Fish and Lakitu, Lakitu, Spiny, Bobomb, and Wiggler. Featuring the amazing Flying Hammer Bro, Super Koopas, Jumping Piranha Plants, Volcano Lotus, and Charge and Chuck. With the help of Sumo Brother, Pokey, Monty Mole, and Bullet Bill. Let's see if there's any names that I got wrong throughout the series. I don't think I got many, if any, wrong. Rex, Mega Mole, and Bonsai Bill make an appearance. Appearances by Rex, Mega Mole, and Bonsai Bill. There we go. Much better. With help from Dino Rhino, Dino Torch, and Koopas. Dino Rhino is his name. I couldn't remember that name. I love that name, Dino Rhino. Spike Top, Swoopers, Buzzy Beetle, and Blarg. With two Gs. I don't know why Blarg has two Gs, but I like it. I like the double G. Featuring the Blurps, the Porky Puffer, the Urchin, the Rip Van Fish, and Torpedo Ted. Blurps. I did not get the, the name of Blurps correctly. The Boo Buddies, the Fishin' Boo, the Big Boo, and Eeries. Haunting appearances by... Dry Bones, Lil Sparky, Bony Beetle, the Thwomp, the Thwimp, Hothead. Hothead is the Big Sparky's name. Oh, I love the enemy roll call. Ball and Chain, Grinder. Grinder is the Saw Blades and Fish Bones. Grinder is a great name for a Saw Blade enemy. I really like that. Reznor, the boss of the fortress. 
And finally! Since Resdor was the last one, this means that the only place left to go are the Mecha Koopas, and finally... Finally, I said! The Koopa Kids, along with Bowser. The end! There's Luigi. He's there because, uh... Because he's Mario's brother. Luigi didn't make an appearance in this game. I made sure of it. And thus, we have beaten Super Mario World for the main story. I hope you guys really enjoyed this playthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed the, the credit sequence and the bad, baddie roll call, the, the enemy roll call. I love the enemies. I love seeing the enemy names and everything. So, on our next episode, we're going to go tackle that Star Road, and we're going to find out all the secrets behind it, because I know everything about this game. <laughs> so, thank you guys very much for watching, and I hope you really enjoyed this. And I've really enjoyed playing this. I've had such a fun time doing it. And I can't wait to get to the special levels, which we're going to start tackling throughout Star Road. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you for watching. Have a great day, everyone. Luigi has a blue mustache. That is all. Bye-bye!